Hello everyone, Gilly here. Let's continue solving Advent of Code problems for 2017 in F-sharp. This is day 10, part two. Part one was interesting. We had a very algorithmic little step to take to um, kind of find, to, to manipulate a list basically, to shuffle around values, to flip them and stuff. Part two is just an extension on that. Basically, the problem gets a little more thick. What we wanna do is instead of treating our input like a list of lengths, we wanna treat it just like something that we're gonna hash, pretty much. So part two takes it a step farther and uses part one to implement a hash kind of algorithm on just any string, really. So what does that mean? Well, basically it means all this. There's lots of little steps we wanna do here. Let me just go through and kind of summarize them real quick, just so that we have some idea what we have to do. Well, instead of considering the input, something like this, to be a list of lengths, it's let's just really consider it a string, basically. And what they want to do is they want us to convert this list of the string into a collection of just the the actual value, the ASCII decimal value. So after we've done that, we have to append on this special list right here, which is just something we're doing. I don't really know why, if I'm being entirely honest. Maybe to handle empty string. I don't know. So in the last algorithm, we applied our not hash or whatever you want to call it, our list rotating thingy to a value once. We applied it to 0 to 255 once. In this problem, we're going to apply it 64 times. We're going to do it 64 times, and we just have to maintain all of our state across. So that should imply that our fold is still a fold. It just gets a little bit bigger a lot bigger, 64 times, maybe, maybe more, actually more. So once we've done that, once we've run it 64 times, we're gonna get what's called a sparse hash, and then we have to XOR blocks of size 16, well, I guess there's 16 blocks of 16 numbers. We have to XOR them all together to get a simpler value, so we're making it into a dense hash. And then in the end, what we're doing is we are converting it to a hexadecimal string. There's one little gotcha with the hexadecimal string, and I think this is pretty typical. If we get a digit or a character, I shouldn't say a digit, a hex character that is only one length long, for example, here's seven, we have to put a zero in front of it. So these actual hashes should always come out to be 32 characters wide, no matter what. So that's kind of a mouthful. Let's walk through the solution. So I'm starting with problem one's code, of course, because it's the simplest way to go. And our input isn't this form anymore, basically. Our input turns into just a string of the input. And we can no longer use semicolons there. That won't work. Let's just take the exact input we were given and paste it right in. So the next thing we should do is we should calculate the actual length that we want to operate over. So the problem said that what we have to do is our new lengths are going to be the character values of each of these. So what is the actual decimal character value of this, then the decimal character value of that? Well, to do that, we can use seek.map int over input. If you're not familiar with this notion, you can treat a string as a sequence of characters in F-sharp, which is kind of a nice thing to be able to do. And int, if passed a character, will return back the decimal value of that character. Okay, so the next, why don't we do a good old list of seek just to get a list back. And then after that, let's append on those magical values they want us to append on. So that would be these guys. And of course, we've got to make those look like an F sharp list by doing some of this. Let's replace comma with semicolon. All right, so now it looks like an F sharp list. That's cool. So next, what we have to do is, basically what I wanna do, if you look at this fold, I think this fold is perfectly fine to solve the new problem. The only difference is that instead of running it through one iteration of lengths, we have to run it through 64 iterations of lengths. So let's actually say all lengths, and let's calculate, let's just duplicate it all the way across. I think that'll work because our fold just naturally maintains state. So let's do a list.collect and let's collect from zero to 63. 
So that'll be 64 collections function. We don't care about the number that's coming through here. It's just how we're going to generate it. Lengths. So this, doing a list collect a number of times where you're only giving back the list of values you care about, we'll just make a new list that duplicates that list out, in this case, 64 times. All right, so that's pretty cool. What is next? Well, next, I think we can just go for the answer equals. So like I said, we're still going to run our fold exactly as we did before. We're just running it over 64 times the bytes or the decimal value of that with this little thing on the end. No biggie. So after we've done that, what do we need to do? Well, let's do a list.chunk by size, 16. So what that'll do is that'll give us these sort of blocks of values, as the problem calls them, that we need to XOR together in order to make our sparse hash into a dense hash. So next let's do a list.map, which will, a map will put us inside the context of each chunk, basically. So list.fold then from zero of an XOR. So that will make our our list of blocks into a list of values, which will be the fold of the XOR. So we're just going to combine them all together, XORing them together. Next, let's do a list.map. What we want to do here is we want to do a printf, but we want to do an X, which will give us the hexadecimal value, the lowercase hexadecimal. And this is a little gotcha. I'm going to throw a function on the end, which just says a pad if it has to. Actually called pad hex. And then the end, let's do a string.concat on space. And of course, we've got to print out our answer. There's actually going to be a string, so let's do percent s. And then let's quickly write a little pad function, padding x. Well, what do we want to do? If we have string.length of x, if we got a one back, well, We've got to put a zero in front of it. Oop, don't want an N on that. If we got anything else back, hex characters are always going to be, in this particular problem, one or two characters wide. So we can just keep X around. And I think that's it. Let's run this and see how we did. And it looks like I have another classic error, 4826. Oh, this has to be not input, but all lengths. Duh. We've got to run it over our 64 iterations. Okay, and I said pad, but I meant pad hex. And we get back 2F8C3D2 blah, 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 which checking with my sheet looks like the correct answer.